Hello, I am Mukesh Bansal. Welcome to Sparks. In today's episode, we are going to talk about how can you plan for your new year. This is that time of the year. December is almost about to end. Around this time, people start to think about their holiday plans. Some people start to think, think about their new year resolutions. For many of us, new year resolutions are last minute affair. Maybe we'll think of something on December 31st or on January 1st. We'll jot down some bullet points. Some people will just think in their head. Some people may write it down, but for most of us, by the time January ends or February ends, new year resolution are ancient history and we are thinking about many other things. But it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, year to year transition is a significant transition. Uh, one year is a huge amount of time. It is 365 days. If you think you have 50 years of productive life, one year is 2% of that. So each year is an opportunity for us to do 2% of our life work. It is that important. Given that our calendar is now organized in 12 months, everyone pays some attention to January 1st. Probably you can use that transition time to reset, reflect well, reflect on your what happened last year and how you can approach next year to make the maximum impact. Remember, you know, we talked a lot about power of compounding. One of the ideas of compounding on a daily basis, if you improve 1% every single day, over the course of a year, you can improve 40 times. Now that's obviously an exaggeration, but also reminder of the, just the power of compounding. As we record this episode about planning for next year, I don't want to imply that I always had perfect planning mechanism for next year. In fact, it was anything but. I still remember my first year in the US uh, I just joined a job, it was six months to my new job and uh, like most people, we started partying late in the evening and party went on till early morning hours. We were drinking throughout and finally went to bed at 5 a.m. Got up at 8 a.m. with a really terrible hangover and headache and I couldn't even get out of the bed the whole day. I was not even able to get a sip of water because I was so deeply nauseated. So imagine uh, spending entire first day of New Year just in bed waiting for the ordeal to get over. So that was, you know, one of my very first New Year. But somewhere I started thinking that's not how I want my subsequent New Year. I would like to say that it was absolutely perfect from next year onwards. It wasn't. But slowly over a period of time, I did work on this. Uh, eventually I got to a point where I realized that I really want to have an amazing day first day of the year. I had to work towards it, but uh, these days I start January 1st of the year with great workout in the morning. In fact, eventually the pendulum swung so much the other way that a few years ago on January 1st, along with Rishabh, I worked out for almost three hours and ended up injuring myself in the process. So we clearly don't want that either. But I do think, you know, personally for me, starting January 1st on a good note is very important. You know, I like to sleep on time get up early in the morning, um, work out for a couple of hours, read something nice, spend time with the people I like to spend time with and uh, feel good at end of the day. Sometimes even try to get something significant done. So I feel good on the work front as well. And that creates a good positive momentum for the coming year. I was also wondering like how come January came to be the first month of the year? A very interesting history. Um, the world used to have, or I guess Europeans used to have this Roman calendar. Uh, which is big part of Roman Empire. At some point, Julius Caesar undertook uh, reforms for a lot of things, including how the calendar used to function. He decided to make January first month of the year because January is na named after goddess Janus. Janus is two-faced goddess who can both look back and look ahead. So he felt she is the apt representation of what January should be, where you can look back and reflect on your last year, as well as think ahead and plan for next year. So since then, uh, Romans adopted a uh, uh, new calendar, which eventually came to be known as Gregorian calendar, with some more changes and reforms down the line, and eventually the whole world adapted that calendar. And here we are. So now for all practical purpose, January to December is what we follow. Uh, whole world follows that calendar. But, um, you know, with that, you know, as a global citizen, we get to reset all our goals every in December. And I think... If we can take this time of the year seriously, it can play a huge role 
in how rest of year will unfold for you. So what's the best way to reflect about the year? Um, first of all, you need to allocate time. We need to have undistracted, undivided time. The way I like to do is I'll just open a fresh Word document. I'll also have my calendar handy because a lot of, you know, memory may not recall what we were doing. But if you go back to your calendar, you know, and see what meetings you had in January or what were travel days and so on. And you can just, you know, if you have, you're somebody who plans quarterly, you might have your quarterly Google records um, or any other documentation you may have throughout the year. If there were significant deliverables, you know, you may have access to those. So take your time, go through month by month and write down what are things you wanted to do, which happened exactly as you wanted to happen. The things that make you feel great about that year. Also think about things that you wanted to do, but you were never able to find time. For example, I wanted to learn keyboard last year. I did a couple of lessons, but you know, never progressed beyond that. And that's really clearly not, not, uh, won't be called a progress, you know. I, I'll think again whether I want to have the same goal next year or not. But in this example, something I wanted to do, but was not able to either find time or commitment for. There may be examples of things that you started, which were going really well. At some point, it got dropped off. Now, those are things, you know, where you're clearly, it mattered to you. You were able to allocate time to it. You started to make progress, but something came in the way. What was that thing, you know, was maybe you fell sick. Maybe you had travel come up. Maybe some serious personal situation to deal with. Just think about that. Uh, did you come across any interesting people that outside of work or at work you know, who made a huge impression on you? Did you watch some interesting inspirational movie or you read a book you know, that had a significant takeaways for you? Just think about all of those things that happened in the year and try to come, come to terms with what do you feel? Are you feeling great about the year? Are you able to say that, you know, that was an amazing year. I want to more such years. Or you're feeling like so-so about the year, that's fine too. It happens and none of us are going to have incredibly perfect year, year after year. Um, or was it a year you want to totally forget about it? You know, maybe you went through major life transitions. Maybe you really screwed up. You know, we all do. I've had many years where I made like so many dumb mistakes, you know, and it's fine. And, uh, you know, uh, part of learning is recognizing where we went wrong, what mistakes we made, what we can learn from. So try to make an inventory of everything that happened in your year. Another thing you can do, if you have people who are close to you, it could be your manager, your close colleagues, your friends and family members, you can send them a request a few days before your reflection time saying, hey, can you think about my last year and share your to top takeaways, you know, where you felt I was really good, where you think I could have done better, so you can also have this external input that you can factor into your reflection. Overall, once you've got all the facts, you have spent enough time and I would recommend take at least one day for this. Don't rush into this exercise. You cannot summarize your entire one year with 30 minute or one hour reflection. Give one day to properly think about it and try to summarize into a few key things. What I am really proud of. I really, really feel good about achieving this. What I'm most grateful for, you know, somebody might have helped you. You might have got a lucky break. What did you enjoy? You know, what was the most enjoyable activity for you last year? For me personally, uh, I was able to go for, uh, I think, four treks in mountains and it was absolutely outstanding. You know, I, I loved being there. I never wanted to come back and totally committed to repeating that in subsequent years. Uh, what are things are draining for you? What brought you down? Again, it could be people. A uh, lot of time, you know, having toxic people around you inevitably will creep bring you down. You know, it could be a job that you don't like uh, or some kind of um, health uh, condition that keeps bringing you down uh, or a habit, you know, we all pick up bad habits and we talked earlier, you know, that uh, habits are very powerful, both good and bad. It's not that easy to change habits, but it's definitely possible. We had the whole episode on habits. So are there bad habits that keep you know, pulling you down? Uh, again, in you know, the habit that I think it was starting to take hold on me is to 
this evening content habit but uh, after succumbing to it for like a couple of months i was able to back out of this and fortunately now i don't feel the urge to watch content in the evening so it could be you know uh, a bad habit you know that that you want to change in the in the new year uh, any key learnings you know if you you know we are you know the whole point of uh, i guess entire lifespan is to we have interesting experiences we process we reflect on this we transfer into learnings become a better person in the process you know that will obviously not be all triumphs year after year so you write it down this becomes you know kind of your own score card for yourself now you have a record for what happened last and how do you feel about it and the beauty of this especially if you write it down this will be available to you year after year after year can you imagine you know going back to this document 10 years from now 20 years from now and reading what you are if you're 30 year old today like letting your 50 year old version see what your 30 year old thought about your year number 30 right and year after year that your self awareness will improve you are able to plan for next year will improve and you will be able to make judicious choices about uh, where you are going it's almost like you are deliberately driving the vehicle of your life in a direction you want to as opposed to it being just randomly bouncing from you know one uh, road to other just based on what what is happening around you in the moment and which can result in a lot of just random activity without a sense of making progress or any any particular place As you reflect about last year it's not only about what happened in your year we are all part of this interconnected global village world is accelerating lot of exciting things are happening and like it or not they affect us in variety of ways what we are thinking what tools we are using what we want to plan for next year is all interdependent on everything that's happening in the world lot of significant things happened in 2023 chat gpt was the pivotal moment for ai lot of us been hearing about ai for last many years probably many decades but finally with chat gpt ai crossed the inflection point and it unleashed this new wave of technology innovation which has seen tens of billions of dollars go into all kind of startups which are building innovative solutions ai will increasingly play more and more role just like mobile phones and social media and internet play in our lives so there was one big um change in 2023 geopolitics suddenly became uh really scary and interesting the relationship between us and china starting to become more and more acrimonious uh the tension related to taiwan are rising taiwan is the semiconductor hub of the world with ai the importance of semiconductor even goes up you know a lot of components of gpu are only made in taiwan by tsmc taiwan is semiconductor manufacturing company with china's control of taiwan you know it can possibly cut out the supply of semiconductors to the world and that is a huge implication of pretty much everything connected with technology there is lot of momentum in indian financial markets they are on the record high indian gdp is very close to being 4 trillion dollars it'll cross that benchmark in next couple of quarters but what's more interesting is it'll go from 4 trillion to 8 trillion in next 6 7 years that is unprecedented you know the amount of economic growth we have seen since independence we are going to see equivalent amount in next 6 7 years it will eventually launch lot of people from lower middle class livelihoods to middle class consumption will rise opportunity will rise and stock market is also showing that you know all stock indices are at record high um so and given the uh, national election coming up next year lot of tailwinds for india in terms of demographic dividend very young median age uh, rise of manufacturing in the country and so on stars are aligned really well for continued growth and prosperity for most of india other big news for india last year was the launch of chandrayaan 3 uh isro has made india proud again and again we are at the forefront of space technology for isro to design the complete um launch system and landing system from scratch in india and be able to demonstrate landing on south pole of moon for the first time ever was an incredibly proud milestone i feel personally also very happy given my involvement with skyroot who became the first private space company to launch a rocket in the space earlier in the year 
uh, with these kind of milestones, space industry is all set for accelerated growth in the coming years and space is going to be very important as um, we look for opportunities and resources and capabilities you know, beyond Earth. We also crossed a dubious milestone of being the most populous country in the world now. India officially overtook China with about 1.43 billion people. Now that's not necessarily a bad news. Uh, our population growth rate have declined dramatically. We are now only growing 0.8% per year and even that is expected to come down. The country's population will stabilize around 1.6 or 1.7 billion mark. By the time, we will be dramatically more populous compared to China, where population is already shrinking. But the good news is, most of India's population is very young. Our median age is only 28, while China's median age is 40. With that kind of young population, we are all set to uh, harness huge demogra demographic dividend. We have huge supply of labor across all sectors and all skill levels which will only help accelerate the growth rates. This demographic dividend should translate into sustained growth for next 20-25 years, making it a very, very unique time in India's history. Another big global phenomena, which is very relevant for all of us now, is the continued rise of uh, climate change and global warming. Unfortunately, despite all the effort by everyone involved, things are still headed in the wrong direction. Uh, we are yet to hit uh, peak carbon usage. Peak carbon means when uh, this year the total carbon emission will decline compared to last year, but we are nowhere close to that. 24 will emit more carbon than 23, even more in 25 and so on for some more years. But with COP28, um, all the global countries coming together, a lot of concerted actions being put in. We are seeing the rise of EVs, rise of uh, clean energy production. Hopefully, in the next four or five years, it will start to de-accelerate. But uh, it's almost a given that uh, battling climate change and dealing with adverse climate event is going to be a big story of our lives. And uh, 24 will bring probably some more new aspects of that to the fore. What are the big things that are going to happen in 24? I think recently I was reading in a magazine that uh, most of the democratic countries in the world are headed towards polls in 24. This first time in the world where 4.2 billion people will vote in democratic process. That's great news for the world at large. It uh, really shows that democracy is now very deeply well entrenched. People have uh, franchisees to be able to vote for their elected leaders. Uh, India is also headed into huge election, but looks like half the world. So we'll be hearing a lot of news about elections in India, uh, America and many other parts of the world in, in coming year. AI will continue to make inroads, become mainstream. We'll see all the apps we use, tools we use, start to incorporate AI and they will start to interact with us in a lot more intelligent manner as if they can understand our thoughts, can think on our behalf and uh, that will translate into huge boost in productivity. Creativity of different kinds will start to emerge and we'll have the able to tackle problems in many different ways. Uh, this story will take many, many years to play out so keep an eye for that. Stay as much informed about AI as you possibly can because you, just like internet and mobile phones, you cannot afford to ignore this mega trend that's uh, headed our way. One area that I'm personally excited about is rise of precision health. What is precision health? It's now possible for each of us to get our entire DNA sequenced, get our microbiome sequenced. Microbiome is this um, the whole variety of thousands of microorganisms that live in our gut and play a huge role in our mood, uh, digestion, and many other immunity related functions. We can get a genetic map of our entire microbiome. There are hundreds, even thousands of parameters that we can measure through blood. So now it's becoming possible to measure all of those, use that to predict how our health is going to be and what kind of interventions we can do. Uh, recently, through my genetic analysis, I came to know of certain diseases for which I have higher propensity, but uh, now I have a couple of decades to do a bunch of things through lifestyle. And I think this will start to become slowly more mainstream. We'll see a lot more solutions emerge. The cost of these technologies, these tests will continue to come down. Uh, medicine will continue its march towards becoming more and more proactive than what it is, which is very reactive and often too late. 
it is helpful to just zoom out if you are able to take one two three days uh, not only think about what happened in your year what happened around you in your city in your community at your company country world at large and factor all that in to make choices about what you want to do for next year let's review the process of setting goals in some more detail uh i find it's really helps to have one big theme for the year for me theme for 2024 is deep tech i want to understand everything about deep tech and have projects around that i really like the approach of melinda gates how she approaches her planning for next year she tries to zero into one word which is going to anchor everything that she wants to focus in the coming year in one year she chose the word gentle it was representative of the fact to go easy on herself and people around her uh, not be super charged up aggressive wound up about everything so that was theme for one year in another year she chose the word grace as a theme for the year again grace is about presence about certain calmness about tolerating things around you and staying above petty bickering and obsessing about small things these are very powerful words you can think about is there a word or a phrase that can encapsulate what you want to remember your year 2024 to be i'm also reminded of the whole idea of chinese new year and they have 12 year cycles and there are different years representing different animals which have huge symbolism behind them year of the monkey year of the pig and so on so can think of that as a metaphor as you think about you know is this year going to be about uh, starting up is this year is going to be about learning something deeply perhaps coding skills or picking up a hobby or making a certain behavior change or making a health change you can th- you know best uh, what is most relevant for you but uh, being clear about that one sentiment or one area that is going to dominate your overall approach to next year will help you zero in and also as you stumble uh, you can come back to it again and again because you are choosing something that's going to be relevant for you for the whole year another tool you can use is there a big milestone that you can set for yourself uh, people call it big hairy audacious goal uh, in the work setting it could be a financial outcome in personal setting it could be a learning goal it could be travel related goal somebody can have a goal of visiting 10 different cities over next 12 months that's that's a pretty legit goal especially if you are somebody who always dreams about traveling and seeing the world um other trick you can use to make sure that you are not procrastinating is can you front load your goals i love this method in the corporate setting you know we do annual goals but i like plans where majority of the annual goal will be achieved in first 6 month of the year not last 6 month uh, if you have quarterly goals can you achieve 60 70% of those in first 6 weeks of the quarter and not last 6 week of quarter so similarly for yourself whatever goals you are going to set can you achieve significant majority of those by june itself imagine like being ahead of your goals by june you will be feeling so good the sense of momentum will be so strong you will be itching to sign up for more goals um that's why i think is very important to start on a strong footing on january 1st have a great first day of the month have a great first week have a great first great january and you will just see the sense of momentum and strength rising within you making your goals all the more real and achievable now you might have come up with a long list of things uh, we discussed this tool in the past uh let's you know you you probably have goals for your career for your family for your health for your personal development uh, now imagine you have only 10 points to allocate and you have to minimum allocate two points to each area how will you divide you know for most people it end up somewhere like 4 3 3 4 for uh career profession 4 for fa- uh, 3 for family and 3 for personal development you can adjust it based on your personal situation but uh, that's all you know you have to limit all your goals 
within those allocated points otherwise you will end up with too many things and you will feel fragmented you will feel too much pressure and uh, instead of these goals being helpful to you they will uh, create additional stress for you all but ensuring that you will not make progress with any of these goals so might as well be very careful only pick what matters to you and then you will be able to allocate most of energy towards those goals remember all these goals doesn't need to be very serious goals you can have some fun goals as well you should have some fun goals um, which you can do your evening time you weekends maybe you can take a long break or sabbatical to pursue those i just asking the uh, sparks podcast team what their individual fun goals are uh, personally for me it's about picking a new sport Ashmita said she wants to learn cartwheel. Now that's a very interesting goal. Sakshi wants to create more content on LinkedIn. I don't know how that's fun, but maybe for her. Uh, Anu wants to learn more about AI. Okay, and it's not a very fun team. Uh, Abhishek wants to start coding again, and Sundi wants to do trekking. So that's probably more fun goal. But yeah, it's just you know obviously personal choice. Everyone can fun also means different thing to different people. So you can see you know what are th- what is that one thing that you've been thinking about for a long period of time but um, were never able to allocate time can you make it part of your top 3 goals or top 5 goals for this year and then start allocating some time uh, you will find huge sense of fulfillment in being able to do the things that you always wanted to do and uh, you will be more emboldened next year and slowly slowly you can start check off, start checking off your bucket list as well so new year can not only help you make progress professionally but also help you find more and more personal fulfillment in things that you always wanted to do. Speaking of sticking one theme, I also like the framework that Mark Zuckerberg uses. He has been very public about his choices. Uh, every year he picks one significant goal and he publishes it publicly. Uh, in 2010, he had a goal of learning Mandarin. Uh, I hope he figured out a way to learn Mandarin and speaks fluently now. I don't know that. Uh, 2012 he had a goal of coding daily now that's very impressive you know by that time Facebook was a public company huge company growing across around the world but he personally felt to be a very tech centric company he needed to be in the middle of being able to code and he made a choice of uh, uh, or, or made a resolution of uh, coding every single day for 2012 2017 I think he was feeling he is losing touch with who the real customer of Facebook is. So he made a commitment of visiting all 50 states in continental US and speaking to customers in their community, in their houses to develop first and feel. Now these are all examples of picking a significant theme and putting a stake in the ground that this year, this particular thing matters to me, I'm going to prioritize for it. Uh, one thing that helps is to share your goals publicly. You know, this is a idea of public commitment. Um, I have I've seen it many times in my life. I want to do something. I just need to go around and tell everybody around me that I'm going to do that. For example, in 2006, when I finally took the call to start Mintra, I started telling everybody in my immediate circle that I'm going to start this year. I'm going to start this year. You know, I'm going to start in six months. And in some time, you feel so much, you know, external pressure and nudge you have no choice but to go ahead and really do something about that so whatever is the most significant one or two goal for you not only write it down for yourself but share with the people close to you if you are really bold you can also stay uh, share it publicly i think you will be surprised that you will get more support than ridicule when you start sharing your goals and you can tap into external source of motivation support in pursuing your goals once you have a short list of goals Next step is how do you phase it out? You obviously are not going to achieve all your goals overnight. You also is not going to wait for 12 months to see whether you're making progress or not. Now, different people can use different systems. I have seen three primary systems people use. I'll tell you which one I like the most. So one system could be quarterly, which is what most companies also use to plan their goals. You can have your goal, break down your goals for the milestone you want to achieve in first quarter, January, February, March, second quarter, April, May, June. You can have monthly planning system or you can have a weekly planning system. Personally for me, what I find most effective is to have monthly goals and weekly planning cycle. What I mean by that is that before the month start, I would like to clearly articulate for each of my top three goals, what do I want to achieve in January? 
and then every week on uh, Saturday or Sunday, I'll plan my week ahead and I'll start blocking time in my calendar. I'll say what are the deep work slots, what are deliverables, who do I need to meet, what metrics need to move so that I can see sense of progress week over week. Um, Google calendars now, you know, mark each week as 1 to 52. So you can even use that as a tracking mechanism to see how you're progressing from week 1 to 4 to 8 and so on over the course of year. But you can, it can be arbitrary as well. You design your own system and that's a fun part of it. You know, you can cut 365 days any which way you want, any level of granularity. You shouldn't overkill it. You know, sometimes you may end up daily, weekly, fortnightly, monthly, quarterly. That's a bit too much. Just pick one simple system, stick with it. The idea is you have goals, you're broken down into smaller parts and you have an internal process of coming back to those goals after that period. If the period is weak, you come back to it each week. You look back or your big picture, you look at your plan for that week and you commit to or recommit to executing and keep repeating week after week and you'll be surprised at how much ground you will cover. And if you end up having first few great months, you just feel that you're unstoppable. You can do anything and you'll want to probably rush through and finish your goals for the year with uh, many months to spare so you can plan bigger, better things for next year. Once you're done with your reflection, next comes the stage where you start to write down your goals for the year. What you want to achieve during next full year. Now, where do you start? I think writing goals in isolation can lead you down a wrong path. You need to put your goals in perspective with the larger picture of your life. In the, one of the earlier episodes, we talked about the importance of finding your purpose. Purpose is something you really believe in the long term, something that truly matters to you. For example, you know, my purpose mostly revolves around building things through entrepreneurship, pursuit of a really good health, and creating some kind of impact uh, in the country. So whenever I sit down and write my goals for the year, I try to relate to the purpose. If you have a written on purpose, that's outstanding. Then you have a starting point. If you don't, probably you can start that exercise now. Now it's not an easy process. You need to introspect a lot. You need to get to know yourself. It's going to evolve. But if, if you can have a version, I remember when I was 30 year old, I started writing my goals for when I'm going to be 40 year old and I'm going to be 50 year old. I still have those documents. They look very funny now looking back, but there is some modicum of truth in them as well. So having that you know, purpose articulated will give you some kind of direction of how to craft your goals for the coming year. If you haven't ever done the purpose exercise, um, one simple tool I think, which I think is very effective is just try to write, you know, what I call 10 pages for next 10 years. There is no structure to it. You, you know, just start a word document, start writing about how you envision your next 10 years. If let's say you are 25 year old, you start by in 10 years from now, I'm going to 35 year old. Uh, you know, maybe if you're not married, maybe you will be married by the time you have kids, something would have changed about your job. Maybe, you know, or you might have started a company. Just imagine what might happen and just keep writing different aspects of it. Um, where do you envision yourself? What path you think you will take? Which cities you will live in? Uh, who will help you along the process? What skills you will need? What do you need to learn? what challenges you might face and so on. Just keep writing, you know, the process of writing will bring more and more thoughts. Every time you put something on paper, it triggers some other thoughts. It doesn't take that long. You can easily write those 10 pages in a day or you can break it down multiple days, but this becomes a reference document that you can keep coming back to it and keep refining as you go along. Before you write your first goal, if you can think about what those three, four key purpose statements are for you, it could even be just one purpose statement and then from there on, what can I do this year to help me along towards my long-term purpose? For example, for me, uh, one of the long-term purpose is to build some deep tech companies that automatically translate into goal for me this year to pick a deep tech area, which is AI, given you know how fast AI is growing. I want to learn as much as possible. So now that becomes one goal among few in my list to dedicate considerable amount of time to learn as much about AI. Now I can have a detailed plan about which books and courses and expert and so on. But uh, if I'm going to do my goals this year, I will be spending a lot of time learning about AI. 
Another framework that a lot of people find very useful is this Japanese framework for Ikigai. There's an outstanding book. If you have not read this, you should definitely check it out. But the core idea of Ikigai, you know, or your calling in life boils down to finding something which is at the intersection of what do I love, something that gives me true joy in doing, what am I good at, uh, what can I be paid for, and what does the world need. Now, for me, like one version of this is I really love working out, fitness, healthy lifestyle. Uh, what am I good at? I think I'm reasonably good at building companies or products. Uh, what can I pay it for? Yes, if you build a good product or solution, you can sell it to somebody like, uh, somebody, uh, like we are doing with Cult, where we now have 600,000 people who use Cult subscription. Uh, what does the world need? The world absolutely needs more and more fitness solutions, especially in India. So for me, what I, what I have done with Cult and Cure for an example, I think it comes very close to what I can call my Ikigai. And I can, you know, as I think things in future, I can keep uh, applying this framework and so can you. So uh, as you're planning for your next year, thinking about your purpose, try to write down, you know, what is your answer for? What do you truly love? What brings a lot of joy out of you? You can work for that thing, you know, without being paid for. What is that thing? Are you good at it? Or can you at least enjoy the process of becoming good at it? Whatever learning is required, whatever skill set is required, can you be paid for it? You know, whether you sign up for a freelance job or join a company or try to build a product, do you think there's a commercial potential for that? And do you believe there is somewhere in the world where a micro scale or macro scale is need for it? If you are able to find the intersection and then articulate your goals in that context, I think you will have a goal that you'll have a very strong buy-in. You will really enjoy working for those goals. If they are connected to your larger purpose in life, these goals will not become obsolete by January or February. If your goals are superficial, it's just based on half an hour thinking, mostly driven by FOMO or what you know people around you are doing, that goals will not have any depth or foundation and will become uh, will run the risk of becoming obsolete very soon. Uh, Another thing which can inform in picking your goals is just some understanding of what are your core values and principles. What do you truly believe in? What is your worldview? Uh, I'll not go into details of that. I think we talked about that in an earlier episode. But you have your values and uh, your principles written down. It'll be a good idea to pull them out now, go through it. I do that, you know, my list of principles has grown to nearly 50 now. Every now and then I look at and sometimes I realize that I need to work on something to be able to live a life uh, more in accordance with that principle. Uh, to truly make progress with the goals, you have to let go of a lot of things. So selectively pick, you know, you can start with a long list, what people called first diversion thinking, then conversion thinking, but eventually filter it down to, I think top three is a great framework. You know, what are three things that are going to really matter uh, to you next year? And can you channel all your energy into those top three? Maybe, you know, you can have top five. I tend to end two list. So one is my top three is absolute must. I'm not going to compromise anything for those three goals. And then I can have another two or three optional goals, which are nice to have. It could be hobby related, reading related. I like writing, perhaps, you know, writing next book, but these are not must have goals for me. I'm not going to compromise my top three for these optional three goals. So you can pick a framework, but the shorter the list, the better. Um, if you can end up with a list, which is aligned with your purpose or Ikigai, short list, informed by what happened last year, these will be very high quality goals that you will do work on for the entire next year. And who knows, you know, you come back and do this exercise 12 months from now, you will be feeling absolutely buoyant about the year you've had. Now that you have articulated your goals, the easy part is done. Harder part is to actually work on achieving those goals. And that's where things go wrong. Most of the time for most of the people. So what can you do for to not let it go wrong? We'll talk about various tools that you can use to try to stick to your goals. Uh, one of them, my favorite, you know, and I also like how it is phrased. Uh, there's a book called Eat Your Frog. So why will you ever eat, want to eat, eat a frog? Uh, it's a metaphor which stands for the fact that, you know, as you start your day, can you, de can you do the most difficult task of the day first thing in the morning? 
that's equivalent to eating a frog. Um, and if you are able to get that done in first few hours of the day, you will feel so good about your day. You'll be surprised at how well the day goes and you will be re raring to again have a go at it next day to eat the next frog, so to speak. Uh, personally for me, like off late, the eating the frog equivalent is writing 1000 words. I am working on my third book, Seed to Scale. Uh, I started work on it five, six months ago. Somewhere I lost uh, the habit of writing. Uh, so in December, I decided that I'm going to write every single day at least 500 words, preferably 1000 words. I've been able to do this consistently now. I want to keep doing till December end. So by the time January starts, I'll be feeling so good about uh, my able to get up in the morning and finish my 500 or 1000 words. So for the goals that you have selected, uh, as you start to create weekly and monthly plans, what is the activity you can do on a daily basis? What is the equivalent of eating your frog? And if you can do that on January 1st, you will probably be in top 1% people. Most people will not work on their goals on January 1st. So why not get a head start? Why not start ahead of everybody else and do that on January 1st, January 2nd and finish one week somehow. Get a seven day streak, pat yourself on the back. If you want, you can start early. You know, there is no rule that you have to start on January 1st. Uh, today is uh, December 24th. You still have one week to go. If you have clarity about what the most significant goal for is going to be, transfer that into daily activity and start from tomorrow, December 25th, the great day to start. So by the time January 1st comes around, you will already feeling some sense of momentum uh, while everybody's out there holidaying, partying, you know, only dreaming about the goals. You are actually putting in real hours and building some momentum for your goals. And the big area to pay attention to is just environment design. What do I mean by environment? You know, it's uh, first and foremost, people you interact with. Who do you see first thing in the morning? Who are the people you interact with, you know, first few hours of the day? Who your close colleague in office are? Are your interactions with this group of people conducive to what you want to do? If it is not, you may want to make some changes. Changes could be not see anybody for first few hours of the day. Uh, there are a lot of authors who have rituals around not meeting anyone until uh, late in the afternoon. Uh, there are some authors who would have their somebody leave their food outside their room so they don't want to face anyone. That's one extreme. Uh, sometimes, you know, it can be interactions with people around you at home or office can be so toxic that you really have to think seriously about making some changes there. And uh, New Year is as good a time to think deeply about that. There's a really good book called Necessary Endings. Sometimes we need to end things in life. Every one of us, you know, there comes a situation where you need to leave a relationship or leave a friend, leave a job or leave a city. Uh, think about, you know, whether you need to take such drastic action to put yourself in much better situation. Because if your environment is going to keep dragging you down, it doesn't matter how nice and fancy your goals and resolutions are, it will not work. Then a micro level, you know, how's your uh, work environment, both at home, is your desk really cluttered? Do you have a television in your bedroom so that uh, you are tempted to watch something, you know, as you try to fall asleep and uh, one thing leads to other and you end up watching content for three, four hours? How can you create clutter-free environment in your workspace so that you are able to focus only on that thing? Are you able to leave your phone outside when you go to your writing uh, or work desk? Uh, we had a whole episode on digital minimalism. Today, the social media and mobile phone are huge distractions. So think carefully about what changes can you make in your environment to make it a lot more conducive for you to be able to focus on the work that you need to do to be able to make progress with your goals. If you don't, your environment will surely pull you down. You'll miss a day, you'll miss a few days, you'll miss a week, two weeks. And then last thing you'll want to do is to even think about uh, your new year goals and uh, back to where most people will be that uh, goals just don't matter by the time January 31st comes around. Couple of other things you can consider is uh, having an accountability partner. It's very difficult for us to be accountable to ourselves, you know. Uh, 
for me personally any goal that matters to me i try to see if i can have a co owner you know it's uh, any colleague who can co own that with me and make sure that if i am not able to make progress uh, he or she is either calling me reminding me doing something i'm using same account accountability partner framework for the book i am trying to write if i don't finish my 1000 words in a day i get a call at uh, 6 pm every day and i need to explain you know why didn't i do uh, my homework so to speak for the day um, we have seen that play out in the gym setting at cult people who come to work out with a buddy they are twice as likely twice you know as likely to stick with their workout versus people who come alone so having their external accountability really really plays a role so for your top 1 2 3 goal who are the people who you can be accountable to that will ensure that they will not let you fall even when the day you feel low or feel distracted by other things one good way to create a sense of momentum is using streaks as i said for my book i am trying to create a streak of 31 days and if i am able to do that i will feel outstanding and i will feel so positive on my streak i will not want to let it go uh we have discussed in lot of detail in the habit episode that things which become habit uh have are much easier to repeat because you don't have to pay conscious attention uh so can you translate your goals into habits that can help you make progress with that goal uh if you are health related goals and uh, you want to let's say you know go to gym four times a week now that's a habit if you have not been doing that is going to be very difficult you can't just start and say i'm going to have the habit of going to gym but you have to design a plan you know remember the whole q action reward mechanism for creating habits accountability partners external commitment but make an explicit goal that first two months of the year i am going to make going to gym a habit if you need to quit something uh, i think these days most people want to or need to at least cut down on sugar if that's a habit you want to pick up again you know you first visualize that as a habit think about what can you change in your environment to make it easier for you or rather to make it harder for you to not consume sugar at the first craving um i have recently uh, gotten rid of pretty much all junk in my house you know i don't consume junk so much but at some time i'll feel stressed or mild headache and i just want to have um some biscuits rusk things like that which i know are terrible for health now i just gotten rid of all of them so if i feel a craving tomorrow i'll have to go out or send somebody to pick that up from shop so very high friction so what are the habits you know that you can choose to either break or build to support you in your quest for your new year goals if you are able to build those habits early on in the year it will require lot less effort throughout the year for you to stay and if the habit can ensure you are repeating that activity again and again there is absolutely no chance that you will not make sustained progress with your goal a very big factor of making progress with the goals is drive you know what is drive you know most of us feel this strong urge to do something especially if that thing is important to us if we consider that's our calling in life then almost nothing can come in the way so how can you create an environment around you and also work on yourself that you feel that strong drive i think we all have drive for different things it uh, varies in degree if you have ever competed in sports in school participated in any competition or prepared for an entrance exam or if you are a programmer you have faced a deadline and uh, really pushed yourself through or participated in a hackathon you know that you know when you have that urge uh then almost nothing can stop you so how can you cultivate that drive uh, author daniel pink in his book drive breaks it down to very simple framework you know what he argues in the book that for most of us drive drive can happen if you are able to find three things in our work setting or personal setting it boils down to first and foremost purpose we talked about that earlier you cannot have a drive unless you really believe in something Uh, unless you believe that this thing must exist in my personal life or world at large so the more clear you are about your purpose that will help cultivate drive second is autonomy you know most of us don't like when someone tells us what to do 
none of us like to be micromanaged. Micromanagement can be all right at times as an accountability framework, but without autonomy, we cannot find drive. Uh, something that comes from inside of us, we feel that we need to do this. For example, no one is forcing me to do this podcast. I really feel that the things that I have learned, I want to learn, I want to communicate with larger set of people because it can enable a lot of people in their impact journey. So that drive is completely internal and hence I'm able to find time mornings, evening, weekend to show up and uh, try to record uh, for this podcast. It's not required for my day job. I'm definitely not getting paid for this, but um, it is stemming from the autonomy. I have a choice. You know, I am making the choice consciously. And last is mastery. Mastery is when you feel you are really getting good at something and you start to feel that flow state. It obviously does not come on day one, but as you keep practicing, as you keep showing up, as you start to get better at some point you feel that you are now on your path to mastery so the activities in your life which has some combination of clear purpose autonomy and mastery tend to increase drive and with that drive you know you can be quite charged up and show for the activity fully pumped up you know you are not showing up because you wrote down on a piece of paper that this was your new resolution because you have cultivated the internal drive this matters to you it is related to what your life is going to be. Uh, if you read the book, how will you measure your life? Author talks very deeply about the more we are able to align our every day with what truly matters to us. It increases a sense of fulfillment, sense of happiness. So I think it's not only about accomplishing things, but it's also really feeling fulfilled and some sense of meaning in your life. So you can think about, you know, how can you, what are things you already feel drives for? and align your goals and habit to be in line with that will make sure that you will not have to put extra effort to show up. In fact, uh, it'll be difficult for you to not show up and do because you are cultivating that internal drive. You know, you would rather do that, do that thing than anything else. A lot of athletes have that strong drive. They want to win at any cost. And, um, you know, if you read about Michael Jordan or Sachin Tendulkar, these guys are always first to show for training and last to leave the training. Even when they were top of the game, they're the best player in the world. Yet, they will show for practice a lot more than anyone else because they have the drive. They want to win every single time. A lot of world-class athletes, um, they train even harder during off time. Now, off season is time for you to relax, sit back, enjoy, um, feel good about your season, but not for these guys. You know, they make sure that they will use the off season to train away from public eyes, uh, push themselves to a limit and show for next season even better than the when the last season ended. Making progress with your goals ultimately boils down to showing up every day to eat that proverbial frog. Every time you show up, sometimes these activities can become very mundane, boring, same day after day. This is where you can leverage insights from Dan Heath's book, Power of Movements. The idea behind Power of Movement is most of our days, week, months are comprised of various natural beginnings and endings. Week starts and ends, day start and ends, month start and ends, and there are breaks that we take during the day. How can you take some of these moments and amplify the meaning around that? How do you do that? You can create your own theater, uh, your own rituals, uh, your own belief system. Uh, have you noticed that, you know, just at the beginning of a Olympics, there's a grand ceremony. There's a huge gesture of lighting up this big torch. Uh, I recently watched the World Cup, uh, World Cup final, not, not a great outcome for India, but there was this huge show, including fighter jets and whatnot. And all that create a sense that this is a historic moment, something profound is about to happen. How can you create same sense of feeling for the things you do? Author Stephen Pressfield has this uh, uh, ritual called Invocation of Muse. This is an ancient Greek song. He would read out that song aloud every single time he'll sit down to write. That was his way of getting into different mental state to elevating the significance of that moment. So what can you do? Can you have a simple one or two minute visualization exercise? You can have a prayer. You can uh, 
think about larger purpose in life you can have a simple gratitude practice that you are having to work on something significant you know the world has afforded you opportunity to work on your goal whatever it is if you can do do anything to elevate the significance of that moment you know you can think of in the right moment people are able to rise to occasion you know it's a proverbial story of a grandmother being able to lift a car to save a baby because that really matters in that moment so what can you do to unlock that strength within you through carefully orchestrating those moments and those rituals in your life that way the activity will stop being just mundane a uh, lot of sports people use it to their advantage they have a very clear ritual before start of the game where they literally they imagine their whole life depends on performing well on that day in automatic transition to heightened awareness complete resolve dedication and commitment to really rise to the occasion so can you create such things such tools in your life so you are able to rise to the occasion every single day and bring your best self to work each activity is not same day after day depending upon how focused you are how energized how inspired you are and by leveraging power of moments creating these powerful moments in your routine you can really harness your true potential and high caliber input day after day is more likely to add up to significant outcome eventually all progress boils down to making progress day after day uh, i really like this book called managing your day to day it has numerous tools from various creative people about what you can do to manage your day as powerfully as possible uh, it boils down to designing your day intelligently having some routines and habit throughout the day um i think we have talked in the past morning priming is a great habit to have where you just spend 5 or 10 minutes to remind yourself of why this day matters to you what is the most significant thing what is going to be the frog for you that you want to tackle in first few hours of the day how does your health routines play into your productivity system uh getting right quality of sleep uh right kind of food if you work out regularly when do you want to slot in your day and leveraging the energy you get from a good workout to channel into your work are all the tools that you can use to manage your day you can pick up any high performer and analyze their day you will realize that for almost all of them start of the day is very important Tony Robbins who is world renowned performance coach he has these outstanding events where he is able to inspire people to think of incredible feats he talks about that his morning his morning routine is the most important thing his morning routine starts with 30 rounds of kapalbhati breathing technique this is when you forcefully exhale 30 times in a row that puts you in a heightened awareness state then he sl- closes his eyes and slows his breathing down and expresses very deep gratitude you can think about if you want to incorporate this you know what gratitude you want to think about uh, your family your health opportunities in your life lucky breaks you might have gotten in the past education you've gotten and then he asks for help guidance and, and strength from everybody around him throughout his day that is his priming you can choose your own priming but it's a great way to put yourself in the right frame of mind in first few minutes of waking up benjamin franklin was way ahead of his time nearly 250 years ago he used to have various practices to manage his day in the morning he used to ask himself every single day what good shall i do this day how will my day matter can i produce something of use to somebody in this world and repeating that mantra day after day enable him to become a polymath contributing so many disparate uh, areas of life and his work his ideas continues to live on till this day uh, he used to say that if you fail to plan you are planning to fail i think that's a very apt saying uh, your goals will not translate into sustained action unless you are planning for it and unless you are translating your plan into habits and rituals and designing your day which is conducive to making sustained progress towards those goals opera winfrey who has achieved incredible things 
in the media industry she attributes visualization as a very powerful technique she created a vision board of where she sees herself very early in her career and she used to visualize every single day to be a, this amazing media personality who is able to conduct these in-depth moving interviews long before she got her big break being able to visualize this again and again gave her the confidence motivation to build the skills knock on the doors wait for the right opportunity so you can think about how can you incorporate some kind of visualization for the goals that really matter to you you keep visualizing your brain will automatically work towards creating opportunities nudging in the direction where you're building skills to be able to make progress towards that goal uh, another outstanding performer beyonce she has kept the photograph of her receiving academy award at her treadmill so every morning when she shows up to work out she sees that picture and that picture reminds her of what she has achieved in the past the amount of hard work effort that would have taken her to achieve that and what she needs to do going forward if she aspires to get more awards like that athletes understand this more than anyone else michael phelps is obviously the most decorated olympic athlete ever with 28 medals throughout his career so for him it didn't matter whether it's christmas day thanksgiving day new year his birthday and thing else his holiday he has to show up every single day he sustained that practice over a decade and has resulted in outstanding performance olympic after olympic and has put him in a situation where his record will probably never be broken and the such athlete with legendary practice regimen is uh, dokovic he is now among if not the greatest of all time tennis player he still has more grand slams coming his way and he works like maniac every single day this deliberate practice towards his goals on a sustained basis allows the power of compounding to happen enables that 1% improvement to happen every single day and when it adds up you appear to have god like levels of performance that other people can't even imagine how to achieve but ultimately it's boils down to having that clear picture having the clear goal visualizing how you want to achieve that goal putting a plan in place and then showing up every day with your best possible stance forward to make the most out of day day after day and it never ever fails to add up in the long run one of the big things that you have to watch out for are the short term trade offs you might have goals for the year but as the day rolls on you have lot of short term temptation an invitation for a movie invitation for a short holiday or in the office you know you might have planned to go to sleep early but then somebody tells you that there is a office event in the evening somewhere a remote part of the city and you feel very tempted to go for that obviously you can indulge occasionally as in when you want to but you need to be very careful about that you know lot of time we end up prioritizing for short term gratification where we want that dopamine hit we want the social engagement we want the relief from that content consumption or junk food consumption but those things also tend to be habit forming tend to repeat again and again and if you keep succumbing to those and you don't have a very strong protection mechanism then you will not be able to put in enough energy behind your long term goals and when the quarter ends or the year ends you look back and lament the fact not only you have not achieved what you set out to do you will also not be able to recall where all the time went because all the short term gratification thing the thing about them the gratification does not last very long you will not be able to look back and feel great about the party you went to or the really delicious junk food you consumed few months ago or many times over cuz now you are staring at the goals you set for yourself and you don't have much to show for it so it's something the everyday visualization priming looking at your goals reminding yourself creating some sense of ritual around that can protect you in the moment when you feel the temptation to go back and do something which is only going to help you very short term so we covered lot of different tools uh, you obviously don't have to use all these tools the point is the goals will not automatically happen it does require lot of effort 
but you have a lot of tools available at your disposal. You have to judiciously pick tools that work for you, create a system for yourself. If you are really serious about translating your goals for 2024 into something that is going to actually happen, then you need to use small number of tools regularly. You need to create the system, you need to create the environment, you need to recruit support uh, around you. And most importantly, you need to invest that time now. Take last few days of the year very seriously. Like good preparation sets good foundation. Good foundation is how growth happens. Uh, we started this episode by saying that a year is a lot of time. I have seen this time again. When I have a great year, so many different things happen. It's very tough to visualize how long 365 days is. If you're going to sit down in the morning and wait for evening to happen, you will realize that hours just don't go. There's so much it can be packed in a day and multiply that with 365 days. So we have plenty of time. It's uh, only because lack of right systems that uh, we lose sight of what really matters and get uh, start engaging with the whatever happens to be in front of our eyes in that moment. But uh, that never ends up to, to something you can be proud of. So use this opportunity as the new year starting to be very, very deliberate about how you want to spend your next year. Put in right amount of effort now, create a system and try to start new year with a bang where you have an outstanding January 1st. You cover more ground than anyone else on that day and put yourself in a situation where not only you'll be in great position to make sustained progress in the goal, you'll probably will end up with a lot more free time to pursue all interests and hobbies, including all kind of leisure that will make sense to you. When we are ahead of our goals, we just feel liberated. You know, we have more time. We feel confident about ourselves. We are able to think of bigger and better dreams. And these things tend to compound year after year. So start the journey now. Make the most of, make the most of 2024. And then when next, this year ends and you are going through the same exercise in December 24, you will have a lot to celebrate on. You will feel really good about the year. You would have learned a lot of lessons about how to plan for the year really well and repeat that exercise in 25, 26 and you keep doing this for next 10, 20 years and you'll really one day will be standing on a pedestal looking back and relishing the fact that you know are able to accomplish almost all the goals that you set out to achieve which um, you said to yourself that really matters to you because you had the right system, right planning for framework and right commitment you will be able to celebrate and feel good about having accomplished all those goals. At Sparks, we aim to bring to you stories of exponential impact. We share in-depth analysis of what goes behind success stories. If you find our conversations interesting, you can join us by subscribing to our YouTube channel. You can also listen to Sparks on Spotify, Apple Podcast, or any other audio platform of your choice. If you have any suggestions on who we should invite or what topics we need to cover, just let us know in the comments. We are always listening, looking for ways to improve and keep getting better as we go along.